All right, everybody. So welcome back once again. Last session, um, you all continued your exploration of the Temple of Anam, the Temple of the Giant Allfather. Um, making your way out of the spider, the ice spider caves, exploring the rest of the living quarters of this area, finding a rather a rather powerful piece of magic that was clearly left here from when the giants used this place regularly. A weapon etched with the rune of the frost giants. After that, you continued your search of the temple complex, trying to find the missing frost giant axe that had been formerly in the hands of those giant statues at the center of this temple. It was now missing, and through your own deductions and Harshnag's help, you were able to figure out that that axe was the key to activating the portal to see the oracle of this temple. Harshnag, of course, informing you all that this oracle could lead you all in the direction of where you would need to go to see this giant threat finally ended, and of course the threat that Imrith, the primordial dragon, poses to this place as well. So, you did eventually find that axe, hidden, or not necessarily hidden, but placed in the feasting hall and treasure hoard of the Temple of Anam. You covered the axe, fought off some of the creatures that had been waiting here for who knows how long, who knows how long, um, waiting for prey to stumble in. You were able to defeat these mimics, these sort of mutated, strange, spitting mimics. You're able to defeat them and then make your way back to the central temple area. From there, Harshnag took up the axe, pressed it to the east rune on the door, the archway separating the two areas, and activated the portal into the eye of the oracle. That is where we go ahead and pick up today. So, wait for this map to load in the rest of the way. Alright everyone, so, if I remember correctly, at the very end of last death session you were all stepping into this portal, is that right? Yes. Absolutely. With no trepidation. Okay, so the archway in front of you is filled with this almost a storm front. The area seeming to be a clouded wall, lightning strikes happening within it. And as you're all seeing this, you step through this portal. Immediately, the surroundings change. The very atmosphere of this place seems different now. Um almost as if you've been transported someplace completely different than the cold mountain pass that you found yourselves in. This place is dry, not necessarily warm, but not nearly as cold as the temple where you left it. So beyond that thundering archway is this hexagonal chamber. The walls rise 50 feet up before tapering to a 90 foot high apex. Standing in each corner of the rooms facing inward is life-size statues of giants holding up heavy iron lanterns. Each type of giant is represented here, hill, stone, frost, fire, cloud, and storm, just like in the main temple complex. There is a cold magical light radiating from each lantern, and they illuminate a trio of giant corpses lying on the floor beneath a shroud fog in the middle of the room. The corpses look like they've been there for some time, perhaps preserved by this place. Next to the bodies lie their weapons, various different implements of warfare. 
you don't want to do? I'm uh, I'm gonna start moving closer to try to investigate and see what I can find out about this. Uh, uh I do have a question. Uh, is my dark vision currently activated since I do have Devil Sight? Yeah, it should be. Let me check your token. Yeah, I'm seeing 120 feet of dark vision on for you. Okay. Also, okay. like to move up. Or to the the right and left, or the walls. Yeah. Or or we we just can't see them. What are these lit up things that are colors? Sorry, lit up. <laughs> oh, those are the different statues of the different of the different giants. Oh, okay. All Thank facing you. inward, holding their lanterns. Uh. Is that a body? There are a trio of bodies in the center of this room. Fabulous. Giant-sized bodies. Um. Do do they? Can we tell what what made them bodies? Make a medicine check. Oh, okay. Dandy and medicine. That'll be oh. Um. Well, one of their skulls is caved in. Another, his breastplate has been crushed. They appear to have died fighting each other. Sorry. I don't know why that went three times. I'm sorry. Well, they died fighting each other. There were with three a, guys. You made a medicine 15. check each one. Yeah. Okay, so you know what? That actually, that actually does track. Um, so, the 20... Dandy, you can tell that two of them did in fact die from extreme trauma, um, blunt weapons. You can see the Morning Stars lying around here. Um, but the last one, he seems to have just kind of sat there and allowed himself to perish. He's not, there's oh. no mortal wounds on the third corpse. Well, that's horrifying. Uh, does Harshnag have any insight on this? Harshnag would approach and say that it's not unheard of for giants to venture here only to be driven mad by the words of the Oracle. He points around, he says he has no way of knowing for sure, but maybe the Oracle said that this one would betray that one. Or these may have been three brothers in a royal line. And when one heard that they wouldn't be receiving the crown, you know, there's a very, there's various different things that could have been, that could have led to this. Oh, kid. Ooh, okay. Do we, are we sure we want to talk to an oracle that did this to, uh, it's like own people, guys? I mean, Arsh. I'm not just checking to see if y'all are. Our snack would say that the oracle only tells truths. How people respond to that is their own, their own will. How can knowledge be bad? <laughs> Thank you, Wyatt. Well, to start with. How do we... I'm assuming, since we're in the center of this room, that the, this has some, that the statues here have something to do with... Um, uh, with the oracle itself. But as to how, I am somewhat unsure about. Uh, is there a way out other than the way we came in? There does not appear to be any other exits. 
make a perception check if you'd like to take a closer look around. Yeah, I think I would. There is, in fact, no other way out of this place. Okay. Uh... Do we know that we can go back through the way we came? You could certainly try. We can send Charles and Luna. It looks essentially the same as it did from okay. the other area that you were just in. Um, there is no runes on this side as there was on the other. But it does, you can see vaguely the other side of the portal. You can see almost through all that um, stormy cloud and lightning strikes, you can vaguely see the, uh, the form of the other room. I assumed through the portal, since it is that we're someplace else on the planet. But we could be any place else. Or are we on another plane? You can go ahead and use your stone cutting to check that out, Horace. So go ahead and make stone cutting technically just says history, but I think perception, investigation, anything that involves figuring things out underground or with stonework, I think a dwarf would be better at. So go ahead and make perception, investigation, history, whatever you think would be the best for you to figure out what's going on here. Why are you rolling that from works. Steve? That is so uh, that's intelligence. That's let's do a perception. It says you're rolling from Sir Steve. Let me check on that real quick. Okay, that's set properly. Okay, there we go. Need Horus, with the 12, all you can determine is that you have not left the Prime Material Plane. This isn't some sort of elemental plane. This is all very naturally occurring stuff. Okay, that's great. That's great. Are the, uh, I'm happy with that. I I'm assuming that the lanterns that all of these giant statues are holding aren't lit. They produce a strange magical glow. I would like to climb up there to take a closer look at this. What are you climbing up? One of the statues to take a look at the glow that the lanterns are producing. And also just seeing what I can determine about the statue as I climb up it. In the runes is bad. Okay. So yeah, as you climb up, Brevin, you can see you get a better look at the three corpses lying in the center of the room. Um their weapons and armor laying about them. It seems that one of them may have been at the dead center of this room when the fight broke out, but other than that, not really too much to see. Hmm. So perhaps it is location where someone has to position right in the center between all of these. Hmm. I would like to take things off the corpses and lay them out. Horus, as you touch the corpses, I'm assuming this is the first time anyone has touched them, as this is the first time that anyone has mentioned it. I assume sure. that when Dandy was looking at it, she was invest looking at it, right? Yeah, I was not trying to touch dead giants. Horus, as you lay your hands on the first one, even though your intentions are respectful, the air grows very cold here. Seemingly out of the ground, beneath two of these creatures, beneath two of these corpses, two spectral forms rise up. One with its skull crushed, the other still wearing a spectral version of the caved-in breastplate that you see. Clearly, the two giants 
that stove each other's heads and chests in, rising up spectrally out of the ground. Rage distorting their features. We are going to go ahead and roll initiative. Oh no! This is why we can't have nice things. Tiny little dandy click. Oof. Yeah, it'll be weird getting back to regular sized maps after all this. <laughs> Wyatt, you are a rock star with the initiative. Why? You're up first. These two spectral giants rise up and out of the floor, drifting up over their corpses, looking with rage, first at Horus, and then their ire spreads to the rest of the room. You hear, you begin to see their mouths moving, but they are shouting wordlessly. Their spirits seemingly unable to communicate verbally the rage that is coursing through them currently. Uh, do I have any? I think we took a short. Yeah, we. Yeah, I do. Uh, he's gonna run up. Get them within thirty feet, and scream, "Fuck off, ghost!" <coughs> and use channel divinity to return undead. Nice. Okay, what's the um? What's the destruction threshold? Uh, I believe it's still like a CR one. Okay, yeah, well over one. Okay, wisdom saves from both of them. Go. It's it's half. It's half CR, not even oh, okay. full. Yeah. First saving throw result is a seventeen. That saves. Second. It's a 19, unfortunately. Ah. They, yep, they both save. Right, Wyatt. Anything else? Uh, no. That's all he can do. Andy. I mean, it's your turn. Oh, sorry. You're um, good. <laughs> I literally had to have Hank point at me. That's that's how far away I went in no my worries. chair. Um, Dandy is going to... Let's see how far away this guy is. Oh, sweet. Uh, I would like to rage. Mm-hmm. And I would like to eat, uh, not eat. I'm going to move in and hit it with an axe. Just see, it feels like the right thing to do. All right, 30, 20. Okay, 20 certainly hits. Uh, and the C... See soul, please. Okay. Deck save results is an eleven. Six points uh, of light. My thing's a yes. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna hit him with the axe again. Okay. Oof, that's not gonna do it. Nope. I whiffed. Okay. Uh. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Anything else? No, I'll say I'm, I'm done. I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. Steve, for some reason, didn't pop up on the map. You mean in the initiative? Yeah. Okay, go and roll him, and we'll get him adjusted. He rolled a, a 10. Maybe I missed. 
He he was turned. He ran away. <laughs> okay, he's got ten. Okay. What's Steve gonna do? Ghost on ghost violence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think he's just going. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Because he doesn't heal from this, so he's just gonna take all three of his slashes with his long sword. Seventeen in the crit hit. Nice. 22 total. Oh, wait. The crit... Doesn't he have the sort of life-stealing? He and does. do something? Let's see. Sword of life-stealing. Six. That creature with this magic weapon roll a 20 in the attack roll. The target takes an extra 3d6 necrotic damage. Ghosts are unbothered by necrotic. Oh, wow. Yep. Okay. Brings us to the first of these vengeful ghosts rising up out of these corpses. It is going to look around, and it opens its mouth in this enormous howl that first starts off soundlessly, and then it builds and builds until this otherworldly almost wind through a huge canyon sound begins to echo through this chamber, swirling around everyone. Let's see, Brevin. Brevin and Dandy, everybody, Brevin. Brevin and Dandy, you are both pulled 20 feet straight towards this ghost. Boy, I'm going to be standing on him. And then I need... Revan... Oh, Dandy, you just... Right outside of his face is fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then we'll have the third creature affected by this be Steve. So Brevin, Dandy, and Steve all need to make constitution saving throws as this wind, this bitter cold wind, bites into you. Okay. Con save for Steve. Okay. Steve is the only one that fails that con save. Steve takes 20 points of cold damage. Brevin and Dandy, you each take 10 points of cold. Do our fancy little, um, uh, Yeti cloaks help? I believe those... Did we write them into our items list? Because I forget exactly the attributes that we gave to those. They haven't been made yet. Oh. We still need to take them into town and get them turned into actual Yeti cloaks. Oh, okay. He takes half damage from a lot of things. Is cold one of them? Uh, no. Unfortunately. His, uh, his resistances are piercing, bludgeoning, slashing. A uh, necrotic. Okay. The other giant raises a spectral morning star, seeming to match the one that lays on the ground next to it, next to its corpse, and swings it first at Dandy. Oh, we need to get Harshnag into this initiative. Let me get him in there. Swings it first at Dandy. Oh my god. Dandy, that's a 31 to hit? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's 24 Obliterated. force damage you take from that. 24 force. That, that doesn't count in the I do not believe effort. force is, is halved for the barbarian. Can you say it again? How much? I'm sorry. 24. 24. Ooh! He's going to swing again. Uh. Wow. It is the same roll, a 31. All right. For 25 points of force. Okay, Danny's gonna be taking a nap nap soon. Horus. We did not mean to disturb your slumber, but 
be turned. <laughs> turn nice. Up. Turn undead. Okay. Uh, DC 14. Wisdom save. Okay, here we go. A failure is going to give them a, we'll say, a blue circle on a fail. Oh, my God. What happened? They both failed. Oh, OK. So. Turn undead. There's not a CR limit on that, is there? I know it's destroy undead, but turn undead is just if they fail, they have to go, right? Yep. Yeah, they just run. Fantastic. Run away. All right. And how long is it? One minute. They have to use their movement to move as far away from you as they can for the next minute, right? Right. Okay. And if they get cornered somewhere, then they can take a dodge action. But otherwise, if they're not cornered, they're just moving away. That written somewhere. Yeah, let's go ahead and throw up the text for turn undead. They are, but they are both turned. So let's go ahead and see there. the text so we can see exactly how long they're turned for and all that good stuff. I'm pretty sure it's just one full minute that they're gonna flee. There we go. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. So you see them turn towards Horus's outstretched ho holy symbol in terror. The howling faces immediately begin to swirl back up onto themselves as they shield their eyes and their faces from the light of Horus's holy symbol. They begin descending back into the ground from whence they came. I didn't even think of that. Later. Uh, Brevin and Dandy, I believe you would be the first ones to see this. A third spirit, a third spectral creature that has been sitting near the peripheries of this place. Maybe even just made himself known, made himself perceivable. Another ghost is up there. He slowly drifts towards you all, his hands outstretched in front of him. No wounds. Maybe he's, he's a friendly ghost. Maybe. Possibly. Okay. Dandy's just going to kind of like wave at him because she is feeling kind of bad right now. Stop. He raises his hands and says, I am sorry for my brothers. Oh, no, we're out of combat. We're, we're also sorry about your brothers. They've brought this end upon themselves, I'm afraid. Can you tell us what happened here? The three of us came here Ask to ask the Oracle the fate of our kingdom. They, he shakes his head, did not like the answer and turned on one another. Sorry. He says, their punishment is fitting that they would be bound to each other for eternity. Still, we should put them to rest. He nods and says, 
If but it were possible, do you all believe you can destroy them? At least their spirits as they are. Remember, you all are on a timer. We'll say that it's been about 20 seconds. Uh, quick question. When, when, um, when Steve hit them, did, did they fully negate the necrosis or was it like just resisted? No necrotic damage was taken. No necrotic. Okay. Uh, though I would say as hard as I hit it's probably best to attempt to battle them from a range he says if you can release my brothers from this place I will show you how and he gestures around to speak with the Oracle. Well, I guess we're fighting Ghost. Uh, I would recommend that we kind of scatter a bit so that we can unload from a distance upon them, if at all possible. Uh, I have nine hit points right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, how much hit points are you on? I have nine hit points. What is wrong with you? I, I got will... hit for like 55. Really? Yeah. Horse well, damage. Where the yeah. hell did I? I missed this. I got my ass kicked. Uh, I will use my last challenge divinity for preserve life. You can have yeah. 35, up to 35 hit points, whatever reaches you back to half. Oh, sweet. Uh, is 34. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Okay. And 34 minus. Uh, notice the ghost of the third giant brother retreating back towards the wall. You hear echoing through the chamber. They come. I'm uh, gonna... casting. Yep, absolutely. Uh, uh, we're going to go back into initiative right now. You all have two rounds before they arrive to act as you please. So we'll go from the top of the initiative, and then you will all, sorry, you'll all have the opportunity to make two full rounds of actions before they get back. Uh, the second to last, actually, I'll, I'll cast it now. I will cast uh, protection from evil and good on Horus. Awesome. No ghosts. Oh, we get, okay. to, we get to, to, to just do things now. Uh, we're in. We're awesome. in initiative. We're we're in initiative. So what we're gonna do is that was that was Wyatt's first action. Um, Charles okay. is just going to get his crossbow ready. Uh, Dandy, what would you like to do with your with your first action? Uh, I want to per uh, cast Radiant Soul so that I'm ready to fuck up some spirits. Okay. And Steve, is Steve gonna take any specific action? Uh, can Steve use items? Yeah. Uh, Steve is going to, uh, dig into my pack to grab, uh, two items from, from Wyatt. He's got two holy Molotovs. Oh, oh, <laughs> okay. Did we stat those out already? Uh, yes, they're, they're alchemist fire, but instead of doing fire, they just do radiant. Sweet. Okay. That's Steve. Uh, did we skip Brevin? We did. My bad. Wait, where is where is Brevin? Brevin's not there. He is Brevin? It looks like you're on count four. So we'll come. We'll get to you in just a moment. Horace is first. We're gonna. Okay. I don't. Did I get it? Yeah, we got it up there. I'll give you your. Did it roll? Right now. It's weird. Um, oh, I, I do not. Do that. Yeah, I don't see damage. Oh. Fifteen. 
Not bad. Not bad indeed. Okay. Better, better than a seven. Revan. I'm, uh... Considering I am fairly sure that... Dandy is still probably going to try to get up close and personal with... Well, I don't know. I probably should not cast that one because I may need others. Well... I can at least start with it. I'm going to... to uh... Put a hand on... Dandy and Ooh. cast greater invisibility upon her. Wow. Oh. <laughs> that's hey. that's that's mildly terrifying. A and, uh, flying nightmare. And uh, with that I'm going to start uh, sliding over this way so I can climb up one of these statues and be firing upon these things from a high. Okay. Which one's invisible? Um, the ninja mask. Thank you. Oh. Oops. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> okay. And Brevin, that was your action. Wyatt, one round. Uh, Wyatt will do the same, and he will take the last two holy molotovs and hold them like we're about to... I forget what that damn movie was called with uh, Tom Cruise. He, he, uh, I could just start listing his movies. The bartender one. Oh! Oh, oh my god, now I, now I can't remember it either, but I know exactly what movie you're talking about. Yeah, I do that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Dandy, with your second turn oh, of actions. Oh, yeah. One sec. We have a. We have to handle one of the All right. uh, minor goblins. Huh? Yes. Sorry, is it my turn? No, good, good. It's your second uh, your second round of preparing actions. Okay, uh, she's invisible, and she's uh, oh, I'm guys, we're gonna go back to raging again. Okay, awesome, awesome. All right, that's all I gotta do. Uh, I'm gonna move a little bit. I'm gonna move. I'm invisible. I'm uh, Dandy, here. I would just just the Stay. way that the the way that the actions are going, you should wait. You should uh, hold your. Rage action for your next action, and then hold your main action. Just because there's still oh, okay. they otherwise you'll go a turn without doing anything. Oh, okay. Then I'm uh, just gonna hold, hold. Okay, Horace. Is there anything else you'd like to do with your second action? And Steve. Well, I'd like <laughs> to be dodging when they come up. Okay. I'd like to be in their face, but dodging. Taking the dodge action. You got it. Since you're on initiative count four, that will do just fine, Brevin. You want to do? Oh. I think what I'm going to do is for a little bit of prep work, even though technically I could go ahead and do this during, during time, I'm just going to, um, uh, Use a bonus action to cast Shillelagh upon my uh, upon the um, uh, staff I have. Okay. All right. Brings us to Wyatt. Cocktails. That's the movie. Cocktails. I never would have thought of that. I thought it would have a much more clever name. A movie about a guy who makes cocktails. Yeah. He was weird in the 80s. Uh, <laughs> we light him up, though. Okay. We're, we're we're holding. Uh, as soon as we see him, we're gonna throw. Got it. Charles is readying in action for the first one that he sees coming up. Dandy, raging. Yes. All right. So that's your bonus action. Are you gonna hold your main action? Um, I think my yeah, my main action is if if 
any of them appear uh, in range, I'm going to hit him with an axe, if okay. that's okay. Second. Okay. Okay. You all uh, is Steve doing anything else or is he doing the same what? Yeah, he's lighting and holding his action to throw. Alright. You all hear that faint howling sound beginning to rise up the dirt in stone beneath your feet, the little pebbles spread about, begin to vibrate as these brothers make their way back up through the stone into your direction. And the first one does appear right where he left from. Held actions go off. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Save. Enters the first time save. on his turn. His wisdom and save and result is an 18. Oh, that's okay. Oh, he takes... Does he, he take half? He takes, he takes half. half, yep. So, seven. And it was difficult terrain for him. Okay, so he would have had to end his movement up there anyways. But, interesting okay. side note, they appear to have healed. They didn't take any radiant damage before they left, did they? No. They appear to have healed. Okay. All right, so... Up he pops. Held actions go off. Charles shoots a heavy crossbow. And unfortunately misses. Okay, let's go with um let's go with Wyatt's held action next. Uh here we go. Seventeen just hits. Uh, I think it, it does it does a d4 of damage until he uses a turn to like wipe it off. Okay. Uh, so Steve, because he's not proficient in improvised weapons, will just be a straight strength throw. Okay. Ten. Ten does not hit. Right. Uh, let's go with Horus's held action. Oh, you dodging. took the dodge action. Dodging. Got it. Got it. And Brevin, your held action. Uh, allow me to just start. Allow me to fire a pair of Eldritch Blast. Stun him right quick. Okay. I believe you only get one. Or one no, beam. it's sold. It's never mind. You're with your. It's multiple beams on one action, right? Yeah, for one cast. Yeah. Okay. Got but it. But it doesn't take necrotic damage. It's not. Uh, it's normally force damage. It's oh, only great. necrotic if I use that former dread thing. And I can select for it to do additional necrotic, so I'm just not bothering this time. 18 hits. So Figured out why she was crying. And there's another 18? Uh, give me one second, I'll handle that, sweetie. Yeah, she shit up her back. Oh, that's... <laughs> I certainly do not envy okay. whoever's about to deal with that right now. Uh, that's probably gonna be me real quick, hold on. Okay. 14 points of force, not bad. Okay. Make sure it's reach is 10 feet, I'm certain it is, but just to make sure... Okay, it's gonna start swinging. The first mace is going for Horus. Disadvantage. Disadvantage. At disadvantage, it's a 19, Horus. That misses. Right. I'm doing my job. It's going to swing again. At disadvantage. 17. Still misses. All right, good stuff. And I'm taunting him. I can, I have another turn in my pocket. I can turn you again. His eyes just go wide. The mouth just begins to drop in this almost terrified rage. Obviously concerned with the cleric that's kicking their asses right now. Um, I believe that's everyone's held actions. Oh, Harshnag. Harshnag needs to get his ass in there. Um, did not have any held actions, though. The next one. 
rises up in the exact spot he was in. Makes He's going to make a wisdom save against Horus's guardians. 17 Horus, I believe that I believe that passes, right? It's, it's, okay. Yeah, so that's a seven. Seven Radiant, and you've shut down seven his radiant. healing. And yeah, he's going to swing. He's going to swing. I think he's going to take both shots at Horus. The one who turned them. Twenty-three at disadvantage, Horus. Misses. Wow. Okay. Fifteen at disadvantage certainly misses as well. Okay. Yep. Good stuff. Good even stuff. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Wow. All right, Horus. That does bring us to your turn. I, I continue to dodge. All right. You weren't here earlier, but but I I have a pocket full of turns. <laughs> How's that radiant damage working out for you? They don't seem to like mm -hmm. it. <laughs> All right, Brevin, are you here? We can come back to you if we need to. OK. OK, hold on one second here and I attack one of them uh, uh let's just start firing away again 17 hits which one south or north uh we'll go with the close one to me the south one got it right 17 and 20 both hit for 17 points of force. Mm -hmm. Andy, I think something may be wrong with your mic. Uh, but I believe that is my turn, though I probably will attempt to skitter around here somewhere. I'm a little bit, uh, have a little bit of cover from them. All right, it's going to bring us to Wyatt. Molotov on the second one. Okay. I'm going to use inspiration. Wow, okay. I don't know how that affects it. Does it burn for 2d4? Yeah, I would just double the dice up. There we go. Okay. Uh, as... As his bonus action, he will cast Spiritual Weapon on the uh, first uh, giant that he, he that is still burning, I'm assuming. Okay, yep. Hey, I'll grab you a Spiritual Weapon marker. Spiritual Weapon. There we go. Big, nice. big six. Six, all six force damage. Okay. All right. Charles is going to take some pot shots. One hit. Dandy, you're up. All right. Uh, did neither of them neither of them was close enough to hit right with held actions? Oh yeah, they were. I'm sorry. Did, did I did I skip your held actions? Because you definitely got them off. Oh okay, cool. Um, I guess the one this guy would be closest, yeah. right? Indeed. Okay. So that would be would fourteen. 14 hit? Does not hit, unfortunately. That's okay. Well, I, does it held action both attacks or just one? No, just the one. That I that I didn't okay, cool. look up. <laughs> okay, no problem. Uh, I wasn't sure. Um, so I guess for her actual turn, turn, uh, she is raging. She is radiant, and she is going to smack it with her axe. Nice. Cool. Twenty-two, 22 hits. Yes. I can't wait until we get late in this game, and I can say twenty-two does not hit. <laughs> I am not looking forward to that as you are. Uh, that's the Cecil, please. If yeah, yep. they 
Uh, which one? Just the one right in front of you? Yes, please. Dex save result is only an 11. Takes that three. All right. So 12 points yes. total from that. Uh, and she's going to hang out there and, uh, you know, yell at them a lot. So that's my turn. Okay. Um, the 14 was your held action. So the 22 is your first hit and you do get one more. Oh, sweet. Huh. Thank you. I'm glad you're paying better attention than me. 25 hits. Yeah. Okay. Steve's up. Uh, Steve's going to uh, try to burn the second one that arrived because he missed the first. So it's a straight strength. Just ch never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He 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 throws it and it lands just a couple feet in front of him. He's got to jump back a step to keep it from getting on himself. Good job, Steve. Okay. That is going to bring us back to the spooks, the spooky boys. And first things first. Say all the words I want. Okay. And he is on radiant. He's covered in radiant fire and he has to save against spirit guardians. Wisdom save result is only a 10. He takes the full 15 this time from that, and he is not going to even attempt to brush that stuff off of him. And this first one had how much damage off of the radiant, off of the fire? Big two. It's just Big two for every turn. All right. All right. And he is going to, he's going to first swing at Horus because they are still definitely salty about being turned and the being smothered in radiant energy. So one swing for Horus, 20, which is going to miss. It's going to swing the second one at Steve. The 19 to hit Steve. Yeah, that, that, that hits him all day. Okay. Uh, just a point of order. Horus is still under the effects of protection from good and evil, right? He is. Oh, okay. I did not know that. Attacks against you are at disadvantage. Oh, right. To be dodging that's right. You can get rid of your dodge. Okay. I figured you were going to be concentrating on the spirit guardian, so I was like, well, yeah. I'll, I'll take the protection so that way, but I should have known better. That's, that's my fault. Horus, we'll give you a retroactive action once the 17 force goes through to Steve. Hit. 17 force to Steve and Horus, you can go ahead and take an action since you, uh, you know. since your last uh, one got used on the dodge. Got it. I don't know how to take an action. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Warhammer. Here, here, we'll do this, but it's, uh, I guess oh, I can't oh. do that. I was looking for, uh, But this is a, um, it misses anyway. <laughs> it's, uh, the rapier. Okay. Do you need a, do you need a rapier on your sheet? No, I just needed a magical weapon. Okay. And I took the rapier last round. Okay. Got it. It's going to bring us to the next ghost. Uh, go ahead and roll for the radiant fire. He's not going to take that action. Ooh, that's my thousand cuts. <laughs> he does get an 11 on his wisdom save, so he takes 15 from Horus and another 9 from that. So 19 radiant damage. Their healing is shut down for another whole turn. And he is going to swing once at Horus. A 20. Wow. They, apparently all the super high rolls were saved for Dandy. Let's go ahead and put that into practice now because it is going to swing the second swing at Dandy. Okay. I was wrong. It's only a 16, Dandy. Dandy to 16 hit. Uh, oh, nope, uh, it's a miss. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. And that is going to bring us around to Horus. Hey, uh, Dandy, wherever you are, move with the five feet of me so I can throw a shield up if it looks like someone's going to hit you. Okay. Uh, wherever you may be. Uh, and let's... Sorry, our... Uh... 
our radiant thing is set for regular map size and this map is considerably weirdly sized so i've got to readjust it both of the guys are still in there it's just that big the 20 foot radius for spirit guardians right uh 15 15 okay so it's a little bit smaller but both giants are still in it right this my my big attack is told the dead and it's necrotic so oh no I'm yeah hitting, i'm hitting with a rapier all right uh 11 is not going to hit unfortunately no oh, please. <laughs> and that was with a plus seven <laughs> all right revan you're up No luck on the 10, Brevin. Fifteen just hits. Okay. And my round counter is all messed up. Okay. Wyatt. Uh, continuing to the one on the north, let's try Sacred Flame. Okay. In in the turn order, we don't have Harsh Nag. Thank you. He should definitely be in there. I thought I rolled initiative for him, but it looks like he must have dropped out somewhere. So we'll go ahead and let him take an action, and then we'll get bring we'll go to Wyatt. Archnag does work, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, he does. He puts in a, a bunch. So that is almost 60 points. So that is 55 points. Wow. He's, he's the melee Charles. <laughs> All right. What? Uh, DC 14 for uh, Sacred Flame. Okay, which one? Uh, the north one, or closest to me. Okay. Dex save result is only a 13. Aye, 11 radiant. Followed by spiritual weapon. For an extra 10 force. Nice. Hey, anything else? And uh, nope, that's that's it for mine. Charles is gonna take a couple more pot shots. Miss and miss. Like how whenever I'm shooting for Charles, it's always just miss after miss after miss. And when he gets here, it's like oh, I I just casually did 64 points of damage in one round. All right, Dandy, you're up. All right, uh, let's see. I have to get within five feet of Horus. Oh, I'm there. Sweet. <laughs> okay. Good job. That was easy. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go back to um, what I, I didn't do radiant damage last time, and I forget how. Um, it's with your radiant soul, right? Yes. Let's take a look. Sorry, I, I literally it's been so long since she's done it. Radiant soul. Oh, I add seven uh, damage to. You just add your level. Yes. Nice. So I will do that this time. Well, and you have a fly speed of thirty feet. Yes. Extra radiant damage to one target. Extra radiant damage equals your level. Sweet, cool. I just forgot all about it. I'm sorry. No all right, so if you're gonna hit. The 17 hits. 17 hits. All right. It's a it's a 22 because she's invisible. Ooh, nice. Oh. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Did we miss any others earlier because she was invisible? Uh, yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. it's okay. It, no, we're fine. Oh, uh, plus so the... six and then seven I from like the radiant it. soul. Um, is there a way to turn on? 
like because I know in roll 20 I can I can set your character sheet up so that you can click a button to turn your radiant soul on whenever you want to so it'll automatically just add the damage I don't I don't know if there's an equivalent in D&D &D beyond nope it just gives you the okay got it six Bleh. and then maybe I should come back over to roll 20 and just do your uh, do the ASIs I'll update her this week that whatever way. whatever is more convenient for you all I know global uh, you know I don't know I don't know. I just don't use D&D Beyond enough to know really, truly which one is the better of the two, and quote unquote, in my opinion. I just don't know. So whichever you're more comfortable with. Again. Seven, so 13, and then 13 does not hit, unfortunately. But I'm invisible? Indeed, 19 hits. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 gotta, I gotta give it to myself. My ability to forget things that were literally just told to me is unparalleled. It's <laughs> same. Okay, another Boom. five. Okay. All right. Sandy's going to hang out with, with Horace and his magic shield. Steve! Mm. Oh, yeah, that's right. We're out. We're all out of cocktails. So I guess it's back to tried and true. Swinging for the fences. Twenty-four hits. Big, big five. Big, big five. five from uh, Sir Steve. Okay, brings us back around to the big guys. First one's gonna continue on his way. First off is saving throw result against Spirit Guardians. Gotta check something real quick. Okay, so the big one, the one that has more health, is going to float 40 feet, 30 feet away first. I believe that's gonna trigger some opportunity attacks. Looks like just Dandy and Steve are within opportunity attack range of him. So the two of them can take opportunity attacks. He has a difficult movement. Thank you. And I, I think I have a shield now because I'm near horse. Can't get nearly as far as he wanted to. Sorry. Wait, we, we get attacks on him. You you both get to make opportunity attacks against him. Oh, I love opportunity attacks. A little bit closer. 17 hits. 11 is not. Damn it, Steve. Damn it, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so while he was he that's his max movement while he was still here, he would have activated his his whirlwind ability, his wind howl that is going to drag Wyatt, Dandy and Steve 20 feet towards him. Straight line towards him. Is that any saves or just... Just happens. So this wind Got engulfs it. up to three creatures of the giant's choice that it can see. Each target is pulled 20 feet towards the ghost. Now you make a con save against the cold damage. You can't get dandy. Can't get dandy? Because it's something he can see, and he can't see her. Fact. Look at that. Okay, and he does not want Horus anywhere near him, so he's just going to target Steve and Wyatt. All right. Con save. You, Horus. <laughs> Thank you, Brevin. <laughs> that is a hell of a con save. Steve. Yeah, it is. Okay, you both succeed, and you only take yeah. half, so you each take oh. nine points of cold. Okay. Oh, no! No! Wait, Anything round... But nine. Round round down. It is eight. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. 17, <laughs> 17 rounded down is eight. It's not for me. It's Steve was exactly at nine. Oh, wow. He is now at one. Brings us to the other giant. Wind howl is its action. I don't think. Uh, well, let's see if it recharges just in case. Doesn't. Okay, he's gonna just okay. wail away at Horus. Both his spectral Can weapon attacks. Oh, yep. Yeah, thank you. 
Here comes his save. He takes how much? He takes fire damage from Wyatt's cocktail. Three. Thank you. Wisdom save result, Horus, is a 21 this time, so he only takes half of it. Okay. He takes a total of 10 damage from all that. Jeez, he's hurting. Okay. Horus, swing. It's a 20 and a miss. At disadvantage, a 20. Second swing at disadvantage. 26 at disadvantage. You did dodge a crit from him, though, which is good. Right. Uh, before I was dodging. Uh-huh. Protection from evil. Can he even swing? I think Sanctuary is the one where he has to make a save to even try to swing at you. Is that yeah, right? All of it. Yeah. Um, okay. Protection from no evil just makes uh, you have uh, disadvantage. And then Sanctuary okay. is the one where they have to make a save to even try to swing at you. Yes. What right. is it? It is only 20. Would have been 45. Okay. Sanctuary is my favorite. Yeah, Sanctuary is good. Good spell. How is... How's my concentration? Um, you're going to... So it was 20 to hit. It was 20. So it's half the damage or 10, whichever is greater. So it's just a DC 10 concentration save or constitution saving throw. Why didn't it... Okay. Yeah, it looks uh... like it didn't happen automatically for some reason, but it's a DC 10 con save. Okay. Spirit Guardian no stays worries. up. And Horus, that does bring us to you. Oh, man. Uh, deep can't be healed. Okay, let, let's... Swing for the fences. Okay. 26 ah. hits. Hits. So it's a D8 plus... 4 for strength, plus 1 for the magic. Oh, there it is. 5... Okay. Plus one for the magic weapon. Right. He okay. is looking Six. very rough, but he is still standing. Anything else from Horus? No, I'm good. Okay. He's just to Brevin. He didn't come through, hon. Sorry, I think I had myself muted. Okay. Yep. Um. So the one I'm uh the one closest to me, he's pretty beat up, correct? Very much so. Okay, and as hard as harsh neck swings, he probably he's gonna do more damage than I probably could. So, I'm gonna target the one who sucked up a. Uh, Wyatt and Steve up there. And it's time to use my second spell slot of the day. And oh. we're going to... Sorry. No, 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 you're good. Uh, DC 16 intelligence save for that, uh, the other giant ghost, the one who's there by Wyatt. Uh, if he fails, he's going to take 25 damage, and he's going to be considered incapacitated wow. until the start of my next turn. Okay, here comes the save. It is an intelligent saving throw? Yes. 14. So he fails. Wow. Okay, huge. 25 psychic damage. Let me make sure. I'm pretty sure he can take psychic damage. Yeah. So 25 psychic damage. And he's incapacitated. Yep. Ah, making me spell. I got it wrong. Damn. <laughs> I don't break out that spell every time, but the times I have broken out, it's been a useful son of a god. <laughs> I wasn't wrong. My APIs are broken. Yay. How long? How long's the incapacitation? Until the start of my next turn. Okay. So basically, he's not doing anything to Wyatt or Steve this next round. Right. Hey. And that is my turn. Harshnag is gonna take care of business. Yeah. 
<laughs> what? With that crit. Mm. All right, this is this is very interesting. He is incapacitated, correct? Indeed. Can I can I drag him back into Spirit Guardians? Uh, you only have half your movement when you're dragging something, and I believe he is immune to the grappled condition. So that would be a negative. Okay. So I can't grapple him. Can I push him? Just. <laughs> Is, is he an object? He is not. Can Bandy he gets is, down on her hands and knees behind him so that he trips over her and like he is like he is incorporeal. Her. He can move through other creatures and objects as if they were simply difficult to raid. So I do believe that exempts him from being shoved around. Okay, that makes sense. Um, you can you can use the eldritch blast thing that pulls. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, let's let's just go back to tried and true then. Uh, Sacred Flame. Okay. Is it fail? Uh, 12 Radiant, and then uh, he will move his spiritual weapon towards him. Not watch you right now, baby. 23 hits. For 5 force. And then uh, he can't take, so I'm going to move back. Uh, into Spirit Guardians. Wise. That is White's turn. Okay. Dandy, you're up. Yes. Dandy is... Uh, come on, Horace! Um... <laughs> <laughs> going to come up here and let's see how far away is he because everything up here oh sorry i didn't mean to do that right there. yes i can get close enough to him to hit him with my axe i'm invisible i'm flying and i whap him with my great axe okay 27 crit hit unseen wow. attacker advantage mm -hmm. all right i want to see if it does the damage it's supposed to I was about to ask if you were going to smite. I... <laughs> Not today. Oh, it didn't do it twice, did it? Just once. Yeah, just okay, once. Okay, then. Um... Just roll a second d12. It. Just roll another d12. d12. I, I, that was what it was. I couldn't remember what I, what I was supposed to be rolling. I'll take it. All right, so 13, 12. But math is hard. It's I know. <laughs> we'll do it again. Oh. It? Cool. What's up, Hank? And oh, I forgot to do the Cecil and the plus seven for radiant damage. Got it. So let me do my Cecil real okay, quick. Okay, so twenty-two more. Wow. Wee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How's how's he looking? Very rough. He is on the verge of doom. All right. Someone Let's come over if, here and doom him. See if Steve can take him down before it kills him. Go He's Steve. got a whole another round. <laughs> Let's go, Steve. Three swing. Big boy. Wait, are these advantage because he's incapacitated? Uh, no. It's uh, just, uh, just, it's just, um, can't take actions or reactions. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. You know what? Steve has movement. He does? Oh, does yeah. Flanking, <laughs> flanking count for advantage? Flanking. yep. Come on, Steve. Fuck him up. 23 hits. Good job, Steve. 18 hits. How does Steve take him down? Oh! oh! He says, ah, what would Steve yell? Oh, he's probably, like, excited, right? Because he's never fought in other ghosts? Mostly humans, right? Yeah, we can say that this is his first time fighting a ghost. Yeah. The, Especially the, a giant ghost. Yeah. Yeah, he leaps up and just right through his, his incorporeal throat. He murked him. <laughs> All right. The incorporeal form sinks down into the body that left that it left. And as it sinks down, those two bodies begin to rapidly deteriorate, possibly hundreds of years of decomposition happening all at once. 
All that is left is weapons, their two bags, a breastplate, uh, the one that is not caved in, their morning stars, and skeletal remains of two giants. The third does remain very much well preserved as Igoron re enters the room, drifts over towards you all, and thanks you for having laid his brothers to rest at last. He says that his duties to this place continue, but he is glad that the rage and spiteful spirits of his brothers have left. He will, of course, be more than happy to sh instruct you on how to contact the Oracle right after we get back from our break. Is it already break time? Yeah, at 6.23. I feel like we missed half of it cleaning up a mega poop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, so we are back after having defeated the ghosts of Blockothcus and Uglothcus. You all find yourselves here with their brother, Igoron, in the Eye of the Allfather, in the Temple of the Oracle. He, after thanking you for laying his brother's spirits to rest, finishes explaining what happened here, how... His brothers had come here seeking guidance on how best to rule their kingdom. And after the answers they received weren't exactly what they had hoped, they turned on one another. Igoron, refusing to fight his brothers, was left here. But as recompense for the blood that his brothers spilled in this sacred place, he gave himself up to become a guide to the Oracle and help those who arrived however he could. The obstacles of his spiteful brothers out of the way, he is prepared to perform that task. He gives you directions clearing the bodies out of the way, he gives you directions on where to stand and how to address the oracle. Horus, would you like to complete inspecting these bodies? You are going to drag them out of the way. Uh, how Harshneg would help you out. Um, would you like to see what else they have on them while you're doing that? Or would anyone else like to do that? Uh, I am curious, so yes. Teamwork. So, as you move all of those, Igoron does in fact say that you may take whatever you wish from them and from his body as well. They have no more use of it, and he, having agreed to spend the rest of eternity here, certainly has no use for the objects left on his body, on his person. So, the dead cloud giants between them carry a plus two morning star that as soon as somebody lays their hands on it will begin to slowly shrink down to a manageable size. That weapon does have a magical right. resize property. So, a plus two morning star, if anyone would be interested in that. In addition, go ahead. I was going to say, I, someone uses a morning star or a mace already, right? I believe somebody uses a mace. Morning star is a bigger implement, I believe. Mm -hmm. A uh, morning star is considered a martial weapon. Uh, I think you and Horus are the only two currently in the party who have proficiency with those weapons. Yep. Horus, up to you, my dude. Let's go ahead and go through everything, and then y'all can oh, divvy up. No, you're fine. You're fine. Exciting. Getting stuff. I, I, always yeah, fun. Get excited. <laughs> there is also a plus two breastplate with a magical resize. Between the three of them, there is an accumulated 1,000 GP of gems, gold, rubies. These three were nobility, were giant royalty before they came here, so they had quite a bit on them. Uh, how much was that again? 1,000 GP worth of assorted gems, jewelry, and coinage. Okay. Uh... Did the ordaining breaking affect them? They have been dead for what looks to be well over a hundred years. Ah, so no. So no. <laughs> 
finally, you all find clutched in the in the stiff, cold fingers of the eldest brother, clutched in his hand, is a what looks like a fire opal. It's an oval fire opal, measures about three inches long and about half an inch thick. The Ild rune, the rune of the fire giants, shimmers brightly within its core, causing it to slightly warm the area directly around it. Similar oh. to the shard of the east rune that you found upstairs, here you find the opal of the Ild rune. I, th I think I have the ice shard. Ice one, yes. Yeah, so... I'm sorry. I was reading in the middle of Opal of Ildrun and a breastplate plus two shows up. I'm like, get the fuck out of my way! <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, breastplate? <laughs> <Dare you. laughs> it's really pretty. Uh, Wyatt, you like setting things on fire? <laughs> I was thinking the same thing! Yep. <laughs> I was like, yep. this is perfect. Yep. I can burn people at my will. Now you can drink your alcohol. Uh. Oh, we'll we'll get in that. Get into that. You later. don't even have to ignite your Molotov cocktails before you throw them. Now you can ignite them after they hit. <laughs> you can also extinguish flames so that if I accidentally throw one at a friend, be like, "Oh no no no! Wait wait wait!" <laughs> nice. I wouldn't add those to your items. I'm going to go ahead and sort this alphabetically, so if anyone's looking at it right now, it's going to the order, the item list is going to change. Horace, do you have any interest sort. in that mace? The morning star? A morning star, sorry. How dare. The morning star is the ball on the chain with the spikes on it, right? Uh, it's, basic, it's basically a mace on a longer stick. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sweetheart. Okay. Does anybody else want this opal? I don't want to be like a hog. Oh, so many items. I don't think there is like a hog anymore. <laughs> it's just take <laughs> uh, the icy one. So I'm 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 satisfied. Horace, do, do you want to set things on fire and have cold resistance? <laughs> or or Horace here. Forever. You could use this. I don't think you have resistance to cold damage, do you? Okay. So we can always come back to who exactly has what item in a little while. Mm -hmm. Won't be too, won't be too terribly soon that you'll need a. To figure out what you're doing in combat. So. Igoron tells you all that all you must do. He kneels down and gestures towards the center directly beneath where the corpses were. You can see that as the skeletal figures were dragged away, there seems to be some sort of a rune at the center of this place. He says, clear the debris and the dust from this rune and... May stand there and ask your questions. Uh, hey, I don't. I don't want to sound like ungrateful. Oh, uh, just how how does this work exactly? Like we just ask one question, many questions. Does she just tell the truth? Is it cryptic? He I, says that the the oracle 
answers as close to truthfully as it can. It says that it is an incarnation of Anam, and therefore he says that it is beyond lies, beyond deception, beyond cryptic replies. This is Igoron's interpretation of it, by the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the DM can lie. The NPCs can lie. The NPCs can lie. The DM would never lie to you. That's a lie, too. (laughs) 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 All right. Furthermore, he says that the Oracle will answer six questions. Is anybody here proficient in Arcana? Uh, damn. Brevin, you would know that this is sounding an awful lot like a... similar to a divination spell. Could potentially operate by the same word, by the same rules. You can go ahead and make a Arcana check if you'd like to know more. <laughs> would you like to know more? Okay. No one's half the battle. The other is extreme violence. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Extreme soul crushing violence that haunts a man. <laughs> oh, wow. G.I. Joe. Yay. It shows. <laughs> All right. So, Brevin, looking around at the rooms, the configuration of the room, you do realize that this doesn't seem like a divine sort of focus, more of a magical one. With a 21, Brevin, you can tell that extremely powerful magics have been levied into this place to duplicate or I don't I want I don't want to use the word imitate. It sounds cheap, but to duplicate the effects of speaking to a god. Judging by what you're seeing, Brevin, whatever magic has been placed on this has been designed to closely replicate the decisions of that deity. Hmm. We essentially are getting a means that seems to be set up to get answers from this god without the god actually being here. Curious. And uh, he'll probably have his little book of shadows out, kind of sketching like the general room layout and stuff, just because okay. he does that at times. Can you learn wizard spells in your book of shadows, or do they have to have the ritual? Uh, ritual I, tag. They have to have the ritual tag for me to actually do it. Mm-hmm. It's actually uh, any any ritual he comes. He, up. He any ritual. It basically, as a combination. Yeah, any ritual. It doesn't matter. It could be a druid ritual, a cleric ritual. Brevin, you could learn divination from this place. Oh, dang. Uh, the divination spell. Now. It is a fourth oh, level yes, ritual. I to... And I... Yeah, that'd be a level I think I'd be able to do it. So I'm going to keep uh, itching that in then. <laughs> uh... Technically, I think I have to deduct 50 gold off of my coffers for technically for the ink shoes. Yep. But... Worth it. Yes, it is. Or I think it's 50 gold pieces per level of... Well, let me double check. Now Dandy can bug a deity. Warlock. Dear Torm. (laughs) (laughs) I I was thinking of uh, of how uh, Bourbon's going to do it. Right, just, no, the no, vampire no, just no, says no, hi. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on, sick bird. You've received a collect call from Strad. <laughs> Would you accept the charges? 
dear Lysander, how okay. are you? <laughs> um. <laughs> Can you imagine <laughs> it dandy with like a direct line to Asmodeus? Oh no, <laughs> I don't want Conver to. The conversations Ooh. those two would have. <laughs> I do not know if I could or not. Hold on. Okay. Don't ruin this for me, Brevin. <laughs> uh, you can add it to the book if the spells level is equal to or less than half of like warlock level. Round it up so it's okay. Round so it up, yeah, so that's four. Yeah. Divided by two, so yes, perfectly. Okay. Yeah. Nice. It takes two hours and costs fifty gold piece for the rare inks needed to inscribe it. So. Basically, I'm going to be spending 200 gold, and uh, we're going to be, I suppose y'all are going to be cooling your heels as I do this thing after we're I done. I will gladly here. chip in money when uh, you do this. I believe I have none on me. I still have none gold left after I do this, so. But uh, if we, if it would be more convenient, we can also... Uh, have it where we ask the questions first, and then if the party elects to take a rest in here, I could do it at that point. That way, the rest of the party could be getting a long rest while I'm doing my thing. Maybe you should do it now in case we decide to <laughs> battle to the death like the giants did. <laughs> my goodness, what kind of questions are you planning on asking? Hank and I were literally discussing this in the car. <laughs> what are we going to ask? <laughs> okay. So, Igron has instructed you all on how to contact the Oracle. The voice of Anam, as he puts it. He takes a few floating feet back. It recommends that only one of you stand at the center at a time. Says the consequences of doing otherwise could be unpredictable. So who wants to go first? Anyone? I am okay having Brevin go in first, just because what he's going to, he wants to start with is pretty cut and dry. Okay. All right. So Brevin steps forward to the center of the circle, and Brevin, as you stand in that circle, a question brewing in your mind the lanterns of these six giants surrounding you begin to glow a little bit brighter and you see directly above you up at the termination point of this vaulted ceiling 90 feet up above a bright light begins to glow and it seems to stretch in this lance of light down towards you all the way until it hovers just about 10 feet above you dropping between the various giants hear a lar a massive booming voice respond to you it says ask your questions a deep and resonant voice sorry ask your question and no truth is what it says Revan gives a single nod and asks how do we restore balance to the Sorry, Brevin, you cut out a bit. How do we restore balance to... <laughs> you cut out at literally the exact same spot. That was perfect. Oh, How do we sorry, restore balance to... The ordinate. Fantastic. Okay. So... 
it says, Anam has roused his children from their complacency. Find a magic conch of the storm giant king, Hecaton. Use it to visit Hecaton's court and root out the evil therein. Those of you would know the storm giants to be formerly at the top of the ordning. You also know that Hecaton has gone missing. Hmm. But now we but now we actually have something to hunt. I'll go ahead and copy paste the answers he gives you into the D into the Discord. And I'll put the question. One question. Okay, uh, Brevin will step out to let everybody else have a question as well. next you all have five more questions dandy only has selfish questions Okay, um, if no one else is going to go, Dandy is going to step in and ask um, how she, she can, uh, how they can defeat Yasmina. Okay. So, a brief moment after you ask about Yasmina, the oracle would respond, she draws power from a from a pretender. Show her the truth. Shake her faith. Oh. Thank you. What was your exact question? How can we defeat Yasmina? Defeat How Yasmina, yes. Four questions left. Uh, figure at least, uh, figure that... Horse and wide, both at least need one apiece. Horace, do you have a question you want to ask? Andy, you there? Andy may be muted. Hello? Yep, we got you back. There you are. Okay. Gee, I've been talking all this time. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> no worries. Um. Where would be the most fruitful place for us to begin? our search for the magic conch. Okay. So, it says, Hasty, first, you must prove yourself. When human barbarians came to these lands, they fought our kind and stole our relics from this temple, burying them in the ground. 
humans built altars to Uthgar, their god king atop these relics. Dandy, if a beam of light could shoot eyes, it would right now at you. It says, humans built altars to Uthgar, their god king atop these relics, and surrounded their altars with burial mounds. Now, a tigress of the frigid north gathers these relics to herself. Hands directed and steps hastened by a great impostor she believes to be her goddess. She travels now to the great tree to pilfer the greatest of our relics. Stop her, recover what has been stolen, return the relic to this sacred place. Do this, and I will show you the conch. That was a long one, so I'll go ahead and paste the whole thing. Does Dandy know what tree he's talking about? You do. All right. Wallow text. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Did you type that as you were saying it? No, that's that's a that's a predetermined answer to a question. Oh. I have a list in front of me of forty. <laughs> They really went all out with this, and there's 40 different predetermined answers to various questions here. That's so cool, though. I like that. Hey, hey, no one wants to hear you. Your contributions are unnecessary. Cool, cool. Okay. Three questions left. You Humans built altars to Uthgar are not orcs? But Uthgar... It would respond and no, say... No. <laughs> I'm not in the middle. <laughs> Alright. I was just... <laughs> I believe orcs are groomsh, right? Maybe I'm getting them confused. Yeah, Uthgar is a bar uh, human human deity. Uh. Uthgar, the Battle Father. Cool. Oh my God, he he rides a Pegasus. Okay, well that's Dandy's god. Yeah, that's a that's a freaking that's like an. I just have to I just have to show you a little picture. I, I, oh, I, I wish she had fine steed. I don't think that's how that. How what, how what works? Oh, he rides a unicorn. He's <laughs> my god now. <laughs> I think that's exactly how that how religion <laughs> Alright, three questions remaining. How can Dandy get a Pegasus? <laughs> White, White's gonna step to the uh, to the side and uh, finally use his scroll of sending. Uh, and he's gonna he's gonna send a message to to Theo. Uh, uh, Theo. I've been searching a while to atone for what I've done. I hope what I do will free you from my mistake. With love, Wyatt. Is that the wife? Yes. Oh. Okay. So, why it? The response that you get is short. It is urgent and it is only it is only a few words. It says taken. Not safe. And then why it this is Divin evocation. Ascending is evocation? That is 
Interesting. I always figured sending would be divination, but... I know, right? It's weird. Some somehow they categorize certain spells. Yeah. Wyatt, as you are making this connection, you get the sudden impression that you are not alone in this conversation. A massive presence looms over as these words are passing between you two. You see tentacles moving as if through a massive expanse of ocean, reaching towards you, reaching towards your mind. I need you to make a wisdom save. Okay. You're able to withdraw your mind before this present in presence engulfs you, but make make a history check, please. Okay. With a fifteen, the fifteen, you can vaguely piece together what may be happening here. Something is obviously... Something is obviously taken her. And you could sense movement. The 15, I feel like all that you're going to get is what I've already told you, though. Uh, Wyatt just... Uh, just changed his question. Jesus. That's not what I was going to ask, but uh, he's going to run up. Uh, and, and exactly ask where has my wife been taken you get a response that says slack all wrath terror of the deep he has taken her she is implemental in the binding of hecaton seek them on the waves Is, is so confused right now. He's uh, just uh, like walking in a stupor. This is not something he expected at all. Questions remaining. Oh, I thought we were out. Uh, no, uh, Sandy does have one more. How many are left? Two? Two left. All right, then. All right, Dandy is going to step to the middle and ask, um, are there any allies we don't have yet? There you go, right in my headphone. Thank you. <laughs> are there any allies we have yet to discover? responds simply at first yes many chiefest among which well it would likely let me let me see if there's a predetermined answer for this one i'm sorry no you're good you're good i know how i would want to respond let me see if there's a way that the book thinks i should respond okay 
right, big girl, close your eyes. Close your eyes. It's time to go sleep. Good girl. They've got some really, like, murder hobo -y questions in here. Like, I don't know what they were expecting people to ask this guy, but okay. Who do we have to kill to win? Right. <laughs> Can I become a god? <laughs> okay, so. That's a, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. So. Andy, we're getting some pretty hefty feedback. I'm lowering your volume right now, but just a heads up, we're getting some pretty hefty feedback from your end. Okay, so Dandy, to your question, it responds. There are many potential allies. This rests in your hands. It would then go on and say... There are two that could turn the tide of this battle. First, a young regent, unsure but strong. She waits within the maelstrom. Next, an unlikely ally, elemental, wings and fire. His trust is dubious. Awesome. I'm going to have to paraphrase that because I don't remember exactly what I said. The regent, unsure but strong. And then an elemental with wings of fire. Dubious of trust. One question left. Has Horace gotten to ask a question yet? Uh, Horace asked about the conch. Okay. Yeah. Horace, is there any other questions you'd like to ask? Well, I'm Who asked to... the... What are the Devonan... The, the things that were buried in the ground, are we assuming those were the Devonan? The Devonan dot? Um, so what, there is a few things that you know about them. You do know that um, this is this isn't your this isn't your your right. I'm your, asking the right party members okay. before we oh. use the last question. So what do you all remember about, about the Vonin Dodd? You've been given bits and pieces of information about it here and there. They're parts of a big weapon. Oh, they yes. uh, alert uh, they're within ten miles of each other. Uh, it was between the dragons and the giants, and there was a... And they broke them into pieces? Yes, gentle. Wait, I, weren't, weren't we told what exactly they were? Yeah, it was a weapon. You haven't been a told dragon? exactly what it is. You, oh, you're, you're, yeah, you're, not exactly. What, what what Dandy is saying is correct. You know it's a weapon. You know that it was created in the war between giants and uh, dragons. dragons. You know that it was destroyed and scattered throughout the Sword Coast, throughout the north. Um, I believe that's all you really know about it, though. Uh, okay. We know it can detect other items like... You know that the rod of the Vonin Dodd specifically can detect other pieces of it yes. that are nearby. You've also right. seen two pieces that were very much not rods and had no such detective qualities. Interesting. Oh, I got it. Um... You can test your question first before you officially phrase it. Just let me know when you step into the circle. Right. I need to know how the answer to the previous question, uh, the, the Tigris 
gathers to the great tree. What was that? Danny um, knows about that. I'll show you all this right now. So, y'all are about to see some things open up on this map right now. Um, so, the oracle mentioned the spirit mounds. These are all the various spirit mounds in the north. What you all know so far is they have hit Great Worm Canyon. They've taken, they've hit that spot, presumably have taken the relic from there. And Harshnag would confirm that, that he did not see any relic of giant kind there. You know that a group was moving east to Raven Rock. And you know that she began her conquest by taking over Shining White. I don't remember if we talked about Morgur's Mound, but we can assume that she's hit that as well. Since the people in Maribar big, big were... One, right? What's up? That's the the big, big one for the um, barbarians. Which one? Morgur's Mound. Morgur's Mound. I'm not sure of its added significance. The only okay. one that has been given real extra significance here is uh -huh. the grandfather tree. So when he okay. mentioned the great tree. I knew what that was. Yes. All right. That would be the grandfather tree deep in the high forest here. So oh, I'm thinking, uh, what is a weakness in Tigress's organization that we can exploit to defeat her? Um, Dandy asked a very similar question. I believe okay. it was her first question. Um, no, the second question, how can first we defeat was, Yasmina? Yeah. Um, so her answer that she got from how to defeat Yasmina was she draws power from a, from a pretender. Show her truth, shake her faith. Hey, but you can't sit on her. She, you'll break oh. her. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. <laughs> Truth. I can type, I swear. Okay. Gentle. Like over leg. Enough. You're going to twist her up and hurt her. One question remaining. How is your day? <laughs> no. How, how are no. you doing? Everyone starts pushing Dandy away from the center. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I'm sure no one ever asked them how they're feeling. Sorry, the energy over here is contagious. I've got a four-year-old and an eight-month-old, and... <laughs> it's been eight months. Chaos. <laughs> yes, absolute chaos. Uh, I mean, so we have what we need to finish the Vonadod, or at least where to find the rest of the Vonadods. <laughs> really? I mean, we've just, we've just been given locations of where they should be. No, no, no. These are the relics of giant kind. Different things. All right, okay, so that that's not the how do we get the conch? The conch the conch was um he mentioned the relics from this temple. Um between Harshnag and Dandy, you all would know that there's some there's these items called the relics of giant kind. Um they are what is spread out between these various spirit bounds. Sit down. So the Vonindod is a very specific project to the fire giants. This is all giant kind. These relics. Ah, okay. I had made the assumption that the Vonindod were the relics that they were talking about. No. Two different things. So the Oracle has requested that you recover the relics of giant kind that Yasmina has stolen from these burial mounds and bring them back here. After that, he'll reveal to you the location of the conch. Oh, so we don't have to 
find the ones that are missing. We just have to find the ones that, that she took. She has taken, right. Yes. So we're going on a fetch quest. Uh, Who wants to take the last question, y'all? Before Dandy leaps into the center and asks how the how the spell how the how the divination spell is doing today. <laughs> how about hey guys, how about we ask about if there's any specific weapons we will need? That's actually not a bad idea. Well, Dandy Ra got a good one. Ra <laughs> rather than weapons, maybe knowledge. Anything else we need? Knowledge, weapons, etc. Et <laughs> she's, she's sleepy, baby. She's sleepy. As good as anything else, Dandy. I don't want the responsibility. <laughs> Bad Brevin, ask. <laughs> Go to sleep. Uh, Brevin heads into the center and asks if there is any weaponry, knowledge, or any other things that are known of that the party is going to need to try to complete this quest. As far as gathering these items and restoring them. Yeah. Yeah. responds simply the king that's the answer that's, that's the, the answer king. the king of what god damn it zoltan <laughs> i am <laughs> presuming i'm presuming the storm shots as well ekaton's court uh, Hecaton has gone missing. Find the king. Finding king. Okay. Well, I believe that has questions asked. Uh, that is, in fact, six questions. If we... Uh, given how this orb is set up similar to a nation spell, I think if given enough time, I could actually learn how to utilize a lesser version of it as a ritual. Do it. Uh, it's going to take me a considerable amount of time, so if y'all, so if y'all desire to have a long rest in that period, uh, Feel free, and I'll just uh, start working on this. Yes, I would like my rages back. You all can, in fact, take a well-deserved long rest. Except for me. Right. <laughs> except for except for Brevin. Luckily, he gets everything back on a short rest, which you can do. Yep. I just got to burn a hit die or two. Uh, Brevin, we'll need to keep track of how long we are out, because if too long goes by, you'll get a point of exhaustion. Uh, Since everyone's be, resting right now and you can't. Uh, it would take him eight hours to Trent to... Because it's two hours per every level spell. It, okay, so eight, so hours. eight hours. So we'll go ahead and say that you can still take your short rest while you do that. It's not super exerting work that you're doing. Yeah. But you will not, you're not able to benefit from the from the long rest. Which means that if another 24 hours goes by and you have not taken a long rest, you will suffer a point of exhaustion. That's fine. Uh, again, since it's a, uh, since mine does the whole short rest mechanic, that helps. Uh, though it does, I think, mean. Uh, 
My, my former dread does not recharge in that case, but that is okay. Uh, but I did get the hit points back, and I will be able to secure whales. Actually, it would be easier if I go here to this one to do it. <coughs> it's easier to do it through the character creator here. Just go to edit character. He said the spell is called divination, correct? Correct. Okay. We see what that even does. Sounds impressive. Your magic and an offering puts you in contact with God or God's servants. You can ask a single question regarding a specific goal, event, or activity to occur within seven days. The GM offers a truthful reply. The reply may be a short phrase, a cryptic rhyme, or an omen. The spell does not take into account any possible circumstances that might change the outcome, such as the casting of additional spells or the loss or gain of a companion. If you cast a spell two or more times before finishing your next press, there is a 25% chance for each casting after the first you get a random reading. The GM makes the secret. Nice. Okay, I've added that. Hey. <laughs> Dear Asmodeus. Dear Orcus. Oh, you? God. <laughs> so, funny note about that. My right, my rhyme in the Frost Maiden game, they there's a fake rod of Orcus that can be picked up. One of my players has utterly convinced himself that it is real, and so I am, I am essentially. You know how in Five E, the more th somebody believes in things, the more chance it has to become real. Like deities get more power, the more people believe in them, or the stronger they believe in them. Same can be said for items and things like that. Every time he does something ridiculous, trying to invoke the power of his wand of o his wand of Orcus, I make him roll a d100. And if he ever gets to a one, something very very interesting will happen. Oh, oh wow! Yeah. Something alternatively interesting will happen if he rolls a 100, but neither of those have happened yet. So. We didn't let Parshnag ask any questions. We're terrible friends. <laughs> oh, poor Harshnag. I mean, what, what did he? What did he have to ask? He's so content with himself. He could have asked how to shrink his axe down so that I could use it. <laughs> I, I, I don't think that's a question he cares to ask. Arshneg pulls his axe a little tighter to himself. <laughs> it's as tall as she is. I am convinced since that the mace resized, Dandy's just hoping that axe resizes. <laughs> yeah, if no one wants that, that morning star, I will add it to my inventory with great enthusiasm. What are you wearing for armor? Dandy. I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> oh, that basilisk. Because well, I have basilisk scale armor, yes. Oh. Because I think a breastplate is the best medium armor you can wear, and it's plus two. Uh, I think technically half plate gives you racy. In fact, it's a plus two means that's going to be better than any normal half plate you could get. Well, that, being uh, said, that, that being said, that one feature of that Basilisk armor where it 
for he warm turf. Go, yeah, go stone. Pretty neat. Yeah. I'm cool with the armor I have if that's okay. Okay. Uh, but if you want the morning star, please take it. Usually I'll just be doing Toll the Dead. Much better than any weapon. How much is Breastplate? Plus two? I think he said. That means without any shield, it should be at a 18. 16. I it plus. Uh, oh, Breastplate is 14. Yeah, your yeah, burst plate's 14, but you can get up to a plus 2 depending upon your dex. Right. Then there's a plus 2 on top of that, is what I was thinking. Right. So 18. Uh, oh. Uh, can Wyatt will use the burst plate? I, I could, but it would just give me a, an additional plus 1 to my AC. And to be fair, I think it's better to not be crit on. I understand that. Crits, crits hurt a lot. Yeah. Uh, I like the proficiency to actually utilize <laughs> doing it. Uh, if no one's going to use it, and instead of it just letting sit in there, we could put it on Steve. Yeah. Right on. He doesn't have his hit points. He, he gets hurt a lot, doesn't he? he Steve, 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 Steve. His armor class is currently uh, 14 because he has studded leather. But with that, it would put it up to, what, 16. Yeah. Plus X. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah, the 18. So he would have 18 armor yeah. class. A real fighter. Yeah. This is not a bad option to do. I think that's a pretty solid call to do. Okay. I'll uh I'll put that on. I'm being attacked by dinosaurs. <laughs> All right. We need to cast like I have this magic item that has pixies and goblins show up on a roll of a d3 on a one third of a chance. Whenever you play this pipe, you have a chance of pixies to show up and just start fucking with everything. I feel like we need that. And whenever a situation like this pops up, Dandy can just play it, and then we have perfect ambiance. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Tried duct taping her in another room, but chewed her way out. <laughs> All right, everyone. So, what would you like to do? Your long rest has been concluded. You are oh, still uh... in the chamber. The larger passage beyond still visible, although you still still get the distinct impression that you are somewhere far from it. Well, I suppose it is time for us to try to. Uh, we should have asked it. what made the big scratches on the all fight father, all father. I'm pretty sure the answer is going to be a giant ass dragon. <laughs> no, could be puppies. <laughs> Please, uh, cat. I'm going to attune to the uh, the opal of the ill rune. Okay. Um, and take off the boots of stride, uh, striding and springing. Okay. If uh, somebody wants that. So just let me know when you all are ready to depart from the eye of the All Father, or if there's anything else that you would like to do here.
Anybody? Um. Yeah, I think we're just ready to go. Yeah. Okay. I'll, uh, do a ritual of water walk on ten of us. Nice. Get you across the snow faster. Good call. Yep. Okay. So, let's go ahead and put you all out on the world map so you can kind of plot your moves here. So, just as a refresher from what you all know from last time, as you make your way through the rest of the temple, you pass through that thundering archway, the clouds parting before you as you make your way through, just as they did when you made your way in. All of you do exit. And as soon as you do, you see the runes deluminate, their light fading as you all, as the last of you passes through. And once more, you see a wall behind that stormy shroud in the archway. What? So, go ahead. Was there anything? Here is my question. On the X, it was removed. That seemed to be something that was kind of locking it where whatever came down here wasn't necessarily able to get into. S Sorry, Brevin, what was your question? Uh. Do we want to leave the weapon in the hands of these giants so we're able to make an easy turn trip in case Harshnag is not with us at some point? Harshnag would have placed the Axe of Thrym back into the giant's hands as he passed by it. Oh, okay. I did not know if he... Uh, my thing was I didn't know if we wanted to take it out to, to lock that... Um, uh... Harshnag would not or remove not. anything from the from the temple. It would be okay. very much against doing so. Anything that was meant okay. to be here. Okay. I recall before we went off to the eye of the Allfather, we were we were in a town and they were having uh, problems to the south and the north. Uh, we believe we took care of them. Problem to the north. Yes, you all did yeah. go take care of that. Um, at least to the best of your knowledge, uh, you the problem to the north was Yasmina's war band ravaging the various barbarian villages of this area, um, destroying their spirit mounds and wiping out their encampments. You caught up to part of her group at Great Worm Cavern, defeated them, and then you got signs of a much larger group heading east, presumably towards Raven Rock from what Dandy was able to tell you about her people's history. That was the closest spirit mound slash um, major tribal encampment in the area. And you did see evidence of a very large force moving east along the valley towards that location. West towards Raven Rock? Yes, sorry, west towards Raven Rock. Directions, okay. numbers, it's all weird. <laughs> So, as you're all making your way out, you're making your way down that long hallway, those raised ledges on either side of you, down the stairs where you faced those remaining Worm Tribe Barbarians. Make your way outside, and you hear something a little strange. It almost sounds like the whooshing of wings, except it's too steady. Too steady, too perfectly timed to be a beast. Underneath the dome now, you kind of poke your head out just to get a glimpse of what might be up there. And you see something that most of you have never seen before. Charles may have seen one or two have heard of these, but the rest of you, completely foreign. 
is the strange vehicle that hangs in the sky overhead. It slowly drifts closer as you're looking up towards it. It looks like a small ship, almost like a boat, but it has sleigh runners on it, held aloft by a giant red balloon. The airship slowly descends towards you all. What are y'all doing? Number. What in the name of the gods is that contraption? Charles would inform you all that it's an airship. They're very, very rare, but they're out there. It moves so slow. How how can it not be attacked by dragons? It is moving quite slowly. Especially on its downward descent. Once it gets to maybe about 60, 70 feet off the ground, still slowly descending, a masked face peers over the side. Outstretched arms, he says in a booming voice, We come to you on behalf of Clouth, the great fire drake of the north. Clouth offers you this vessel and our services as a gift so that you may cross his vast dominion while avoiding the many perils of the land below. War against the giants is inevitable and the mighty Cloth's ancient adversary guides their fall. The great dragon commands you forge ahead and face your destiny. Thwart the machinations of the desert's doom. Return this world to its natural order. If you succeed in ending Imrith's schemes, Clout bids you come to his hidden veil so that he can reward your bravery properly. As he says that, the ship goes down until it's about 40 feet off the ground and they huck a ladder, a rope ladder off the side. Well... Oracle did state a element of his trust. Well, this seems to be fitting it to a T. I suppose we're going on a bit of a journey, Jeff. Yeah, who's Clouth? <laughs> Clouth. Um, they've kind of given you. They called him the Great Fire Drake of the North. Dandy's probably heard of him since she grew up in these mountains. He's he's an ancient red dragon. Arrogant to an extreme. Likely to believe when he says cross his dominion, he means all of the North. And refusing him would be a bad idea, right? Well, Charles, Charles would let you know that a ship like this could move eight miles per hour as the crow flies. Where, where you could move 24 hours a day. He says with this, you could get to the grandfather tree in less than two days. I don't know if you all want to measure how long that would take you on foot, or even if you were able to get to a teleportation circle and then get to Everland, but... Well, shit, Charles, why don't you just lead with that? Um, <laughs> why we'll start climbing up the, the ladder. Yeah. Okay. Everyone else following up? Sure. Yeah. Yes. So, as you get up there, you see dragon cultists. Lots of dragon cultists. There's four on the deck. You can see them milling about, going about their business. And they say, they welcome you aboard, and they say, welcome, welcome. I can assure you that you will have a safe passage as long as you are with us. Clouth has ordered us to follow your directions and take you wherever in the Sword Coast that you need to go. Hmm. Well then... Based upon the information that we have gathered, we're going to need to. We are going to need to go to 
Morgur's Mound, I think. That's I thought that's where it was at, wasn't it? No. Oh. Grandfather Tree. <laughs> My apologies, I had mistook him something. One is very west and one is more east. Okay. All right, everyone. So, does everybody see their see your airship? Everybody can see the map, okay? Yeah. Yes, I do. So yeah, the as you all are up there, you can see that the enormous balloon is made of dragon hide. It's been dyed bright red, but you can see glimpses and bits of white showing through it. You all hear somebody shout from overhead stating the skies seem clear for the moment as makes it apparent that there's a crow's nest on top of the balloon. Uh, the balloon is roped to the gondola section. It's been fitted with steel runners for landing. Airship has an airspeed of 8 miles per hour. He said if you can create a strong headwind, it can get all the way up to 12 miles per hour. So, they ask you, what's the course? Where would you like to go? Are you all, are you already, are you already directing him towards the grandfather tree? So we were told to go, right guys? Yeah. Are we gonna, are we gonna go in a straight line? Or do we want to skirt so that we're not flying over certain things? A straight line would put you over the Lurkwood and the Evermores. Those would be the only two knit locations that you could say could potentially be dangerous. Um, yeah, I mean, it, so their airship people, they know the dangers of being in the airships. They would say that the Lurkwood and the Evermores... They would say that... Beings of great power patrol those areas, and they seem rather excited to meet these creatures. <laughs> they wouldn't use any specific terms. They would say great ones, lords of the lands, various different um, honorifics of that manner. They would I mean. warn of griffins and hippogriffs that patrol the skies, searching for food. They do not like sharing the skies. Attacks from them are certainly possible. Hippogriffs might be cooler than a Pegasus to ride. Let's, let's just go straight. Yeah. I'm inclined to trust the professionals because cloud ownership is nil. <laughs> right, but the professionals would like to meet dragons. He makes an excellent point. But a hippogriff as a mount would be pretty damn cool. So as you're all discussing this, they do bring the ship up to its cruising altitude here in the mountains, several hundred feet off the ground, the peaks shrinking away beneath you. They show you how the various systems on the ship work. Um, they show you how to work the weaponry. They say that at any given time, they are fully capable of crewing the ship. They introduce themselves to you. Um, the woman at the helm seems to be in charge, but she doesn't do very much talking. Um, her name is Delsaphine. Nisroth is the man with the big booming voice. He's the bosun of the ship. He's the one who 
addressed you all and greeted you and welcomed you aboard. There is also Brassic, who tends the forge currently. As he opens it, Wyatt, you would notice that um, there is what looks like a living being of fire inside of that circular contraption here. It appears that they use a trapped fire elemental to fill the balloon with hot air. Yep, makes sense. I'm assuming this this thing has sigils of a uh, magic circle containing the thing. That does. Thing. That does. Yeah. Yep. Um, they say that if any trouble does arise, that you all are more than welcome to operate the ballista. They also do have a grappling ballista. The one attached to the front has a massive length of rope attached to it. And it does take an action to load the ballista, an action to fi- aim it, and an action to fire. So while they are devastating tools, it does take a total of three actions to operate. They are both loaded, so one action to aim, one action to fire currently. Hmm. See if there's any other operational things I need to tell you about. Yeah, crow's nest on top of the balloon. I do think while all this is going on, it'd be a good time for a, a deer kaffa. Ha ha ha! Nice. Yes. Okay, when was the last time you all spoke to kaffa? In a minute. Yeah, it has. I think it was before we start. I think it was uh, after. We, right after we engaged the uh, barbarian tribe. Right after that? Okay. Yeah. So oh, I'm begging what you to stop is her. the sending message to Katha? Dear Katha, spoke to Oracle in Giant Temple. That's eight. Nope. Sh- <laughs> um, going to Grandfather Tree. It's Twelve. Um, to gather items? Relics. Relics. Relics is a better word. <laughs> Alright, that's 15. Are we counting uh, every time you say that's 8, or that's 12, or that's 15? <laughs> <laughs> uh, on a balloon with cultists. <laughs> end it end it that way <laughs> with cultists we think they like us no that, that'd be... no 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 uh let her live in the okay love ground. you bye dandy 25 <laughs> oh god perfect <laughs> dot dandy <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, so sleepy. Go to sleep. God, it's like someone's letting the air out of a balloon. The sounds you make. Katha you are looking for cannot be reached. <laughs> <laughs> she, she flushed her sending stone down the toilet. Don't say what's a toilet. I can't even look at you, Hank. No, we know what a toilet is because they exist. <laughs> Alright, everyone needs to stop touching me. Everyone needs to stop touching me. Okay, so some time would go by before you get the response. Probably a few, probably, probably a good few hours. The longest break and response that you all have experienced from Katha so far. And he's personally offended. I'm 
duct tape you to the hood of my car and let you be the I... air horn. Oh my goodness, I just thought, what if Katha, like, answers her sending stone just like that? Like, do you think she'd have, like, a pack of, uh, children in her office one day? <laughs> in the back room? Danny, ah! Shut it! <laughs> it's just noisy, and they won't stop touching me! I don't want your foot in my mouth. Get it out of here. 18. Okay, so seven more words. <laughs> it's like, like the early days when you had a cell phone and you could only text so much before you had to wait till like free nights or weekends. Yes! <laughs> Go to sleep. I'm not playing with you anymore. It is bedtime. Close your eyes. Okay, so after several hours, um, let's see how far you would have made it in that several Children. hours. Okay, so not too far, only about right here. So, okay, so the response is as follows. Grudhog neutralized at great cost. Xantharl's keep, overrun, destroyed. Giant threat increasing exponentially. Invasion appears imminent. Cultists, question mark, in need of rescue, question mark, will await response. So you gotta wait until Did tomorrow I... to respond again. Okay. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> um, Grudhog, was that the uh that wasn't the task that was laid for us by King Morin, right? No, Grudhog was the massive gathering of hill giants that you all have been aware of for oh, quite a long time now. Um the last you heard from Katha, they were organizing a force to strike the gathering. Um, it appears that they have been successful, but at great cost. The place that you got from Mirabar was Xantharl's Keep. Katha is informing you that it has been overrun and destroyed. Oh, That's, no. That was the one we were supposed to try and look for the Weevil. Correct. Ugh. Oh, now I feel bad. Side quest fucked up things. Uncompleted? Hashtag? Or question mark? Uh, the thing is, though, well, you took a little precedent just because uh, it did it was further along my story arc. Yeah, it was also like farther out of our way than um, the initial reason why we headed to the north northwestern side. Okay, so, with that, with your first day of travel well underway, would somebody like to roll a d20 for me? Bye. Yeah, it's been a while since we had one of these. <laughs> uh, anyone care to do the honors, or do they want me? Oh, Dandy already did, okay. Dandy, could you please roll another d20 for me? Uh. Okay, then. As you all make your way for the first day of travel, most of the way through the first day, the sun beginning to set behind you all, light from the mountains, reflecting off the snowy peaks in quite beautiful ways. Could everybody please make perception checks for me? don't know what I did, but I'm sorry, guys. Sure thing. Whee! Uh, 
Uh. Is it possible Dandy misses whatever's going on because she's talking to the thing in the balloon? Huh. Yeah. Okay. It would just say uh. over and over and over again, release me that I might burn this infernal vessel. Maybe when we land, bro. <laughs> Does it have a name? <laughs> you know, it probably does. Let me see. Okay. Because she would have asked. <laughs> if I weren't terribly concerned with my friends dying, I, I, I would release you. Cause His name is Fusilus. Fusilus. I have a new fire friend who wants to kill us all. Uh, <laughs> okay. I do have Quiet. one very quick question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, since we've been here for more than a day, could I have? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Go ahead and take your long rest. You've been on the boat. You've been on the ship for eight hours, ten hours, actually. So yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. You're gonna need it, as Wyatt. You notice, approaching from the direction of the setting sun, a figure moving in directly from the location of the sun. It's back to it. You see great wings spreading out on either side. You have spotted before even the person in the crow's nest has spotted a dragon moving towards the ship. And we're going to pick up there next week. Is it awesome. red? Maybe it's our host.